Hello and welcome to our city celebration service. Um, we are recording this on Sunday the 26th of July when you should have been able to experience a live act of worship together, joining together from across the city. However, sadly our technology failed us, um, but we didn't want you to miss out on uh, some great worship and a great word. Um, so in just a few moments you'll be led in song worship by Adrian and Esther Stone from Trenton, Trenton Parish Church. And we've got a great word for you from Ian Brayshaw, who is the pastor of Hope Community Church in Hanley. We hope and pray that you're able to encounter God, to meet with him as we worship together this evening. And I'll hand over to Adrian and Esther, who are going to lead us in a time of song worship. So we make our homes a place of worship where the Holy Spirit can blow and be amongst us. We fill our hearts knowing that the Holy Spirit isn't limited to church buildings or by social distancing. Draw near to God and he will draw near to you.
Hello, I'm Graham, and this is my journey so far. Give me a technical problem, a piece of metal or wood, a transistor, a computer, technical book or something to repair, then I'm in my element. Being here now is definitely out of my normal comfort zone, but I wanted to share with you my journey. I have believed in God for as long as I can remember. I did go to Sunday school for a while when I was little, and I've been to some different churches over the years. I hadn't been to church for a number of years, and just before Christmas, I said to myself that I should make the effort and go to a carol service. I proceeded to walk to Newcastle Baptist Church. I did enjoy the service, and during it, I thought I saw someone who I'd not spoken to for a long, long time. At the end of the service, I walked up to her and asked if she remembered me. She asked my name, thought a little, and said yes. We chatted for a while, and she said why not try the Alpha course in January, which she had done a few years ago. The start of the Alpha course loomed closer, and I decided why not give it a try. What could I lose? I was apprehensive and sort of excited too, and was greeted by the minister Tim along with some other people. We sat down and ate a lovely meal chatting throughout. Following the video, we discussed issues arising from it and I surprised myself I was able to ask questions and share my thoughts. We cleared up and Carol said, see you on Sunday then? I think so, I said. Sunday arrived and as I was walking to church, I was wondering what the service would be like. The service started with a song, which was totally different to what I had heard and experienced before. But I felt that I knew them all, and enjoyed singing them and feeling the warm atmosphere in the church. As the service continued, I felt this was my home. Over the following weeks of the Alpha Course, I started to learn more about Jesus and question my thoughts, sharing them with the group more than I have had before. I bought myself a new Bible and started to read the book of Mark. I quickly discovered that there's lots of verses that didn't make sense to me. They were like another language. Even the disciples didn't necessarily understand them. At school I found languages difficult and soon as I could stopped French, German and Latin, leaving me the sciences and technical subjects. I later went to university and became a structural engineer. I have now found a language that I want to learn, to be able to understand the Bible and the Father, Son and Holy Spirit more. I can't explain why I chose to come to the carol service at this church, and without meeting a school friend from a long time ago, I doubt if I'd be here where I am today. I'm so thankful this did happen, and I look to know more about God, Jesus and the Bible. I believe that with God's help and your support, I will succeed. Whilst it is sad that due to the current situation, I'm not able to be with you in person, and some of us will be afraid and anxious, but with our faith, together we will come through this, and we will meet in person. My journey continues. Peace and love to us all. Today's reading is taken from Ezekiel 37 verses 1 to 14. The hand of the Lord was on me, and he brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord, and set me in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. He led me to and fro among them, and I saw a great many bones on the floor of the valley, bones that were very dry. He asked me, Son of man, can these bones live? I said, Sovereign Lord, you alone know. Then he said to me, Prophesy to these bones, and say to them, Dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. This is what the Sovereign Lord says to these bones. 
I will make breath enter you and you will come to life. I will attach tendons to you and make flesh come upon you and cover you with skin. I will put breath in you and you will come to life. Then you will know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded and as I was prophesying, there was a noise, a rattling sound and the bones came together bone to bone. I looked and tendons and flesh appeared on them and skin covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, prophesy to the breath, prophesy son of man and say to it, this is what the sovereign Lord says. Come breath from the four winds and breathe into these slain that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me and breath entered them. They came to life and stood upon their feet, a vast army. Then he said to me, son of man, these bones are the people of Israel. They say our bones are dried up and our hope is gone. We are cut off. Therefore prophesy and say to them, this is what the sovereign Lord says. My people, I am going to open your graves and bring you up from them. I will bring you back to the land of Israel. Then you, my people, will know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and bring you up from them. I will put my spirit in you and you will live and I will settle you in your own land. Then you will know that I, the Lord, have spoken, and I have done it, declares the Lord. Amen. So let's open up that reading a bit. Do you ever put yourself in that Bible story when you're reading about it? Could you kind of imagine that you are Ezekiel there? The, the hand of God comes upon you. How does that feel? That is fantastic. And you are transported in the spirit. And that is fantastic. And then you find yourself in a valley. Well, you know, that's okay. Valleys can be nice places. But this valley is a bit different. This valley is full of bones, dry bones, arid, desolation, full of death. And all of a sudden, you're not feeling quite so happy anymore, are you? You don't want to find yourself in a barren place. And yet, this is exactly where Ezekiel is. He's in the most desolate, barren place that you could ever imagine. Who wants an encounter with God? Well, hopefully all of us do. You encounter with God, I'm up for that. Who wants to be taken into a barren place? None of us. And yet on this occasion, the encounter with God comes because Ezekiel is in a barren place. And we might feel at the moment that that's where we are, that we are in a barren place because of what's happening in the world at the moment. There are still thousands of people dying across the world, people who are losing their jobs, fears of a second wave. In fact, there was that, that news about what's happened in Spain, the increasing numbers, which means that uh, you've got to quarantine if you come back from Spain. We've got fears for the economy. Lockdown is affecting the way that we live our lives. Church services are limited or closed completely. It does not feel like a great place to be. Ezekiel would not have thought that was a great place to be. We don't feel living through this time feels like a great place to be. And God speaks to Ezekiel. He's there in this valley, and God says to him, Ezekiel, can these bones live? Now, I put myself in Ezekiel's place. When I'm feeling the hand of God upon me, if God had said, can, can bones live? I'd have gone, yes, God. And when the hand of God is transporting me, can these bones live? Yes, God. But when you're in the middle of the barren place, when the desolate bones are around you, and God says, can the bones live? You kind of go, ooh, there's a lot of them. And they are very dry. 
And Ezekiel's very honest with God. He replies to God, he says, God, you know, only you know. In other words, he's saying, I'm not sure. It's kind of up to you, God, because it's not up to me. I, I, I can't make the bones live. I'm not feeling full of faith. I'm not feeling bouncy and jumping and happy now. God, I'm, I'm just saying it's up to you. So maybe that is where we feel we are now in the barren place. But we see in this story that God is not limited in the barren place. God is not stuck in the barren place. Where Ezekiel is, looking around, not even that full of faith. Still, God is with him. And we know what's going to happen next. We've read the rest of the story. We know the most incredible thing that Ezekiel's ever seen in his life is about to happen. Where the breath of God is going to come in where there is death and bring life and resurrection and health into what looks lifeless. There is no limit with God. And where God wants you to start tonight is understanding that even though you're in a barren place, or you may be in a barren place, it does not mean that God is not with you. In fact, the, the reason Ezekiel was there was because it was a barren place. He was ready to speak into that barren place because that's what God had brought him there to do. And no matter how barren your situation may appear to be, the truth is God knew You are going to be living in this time. You're placed here for such a time as this. Because God knows his people. God knows the situation. No matter how barren the place, God can work in your situation. And God can work through you in other people. So what happens next? Well, God's word comes. God's command comes into this situation. And God says, prophesy to these bones. Speak to these bones. Ezekiel, I'm going to give you some words to say, and I want you to talk to the bones, which kind of feels a bit weird, doesn't it? And even though Ezekiel isn't full of faith, he speaks to the bones. Now, there's some incredible truth here, because I want you to understand that God works through people. He doesn't need to work through people. He can do everything without us if he wanted to. He doesn't need Ezekiel to speak to the bones. To make the miracle happen. He doesn't even need Ezekiel there to watch what happens. He could do the whole thing without Ezekiel. But that's not how God works. He works through people. He works through people like you. Your uh, God wants to put his word in your mouth for you to speak to make a difference to what's going on around you. Have you ever got little kids involved in baking? Have you ever done that? You're, you're going to make a cake, you're going to do some baking, and you go to the little kids, do you want to come and help me do this? Why do you do that? Do you do that because it's going to make a better job than if you did it yourself? <laughs> do you do it because it's going to be faster than if you did it yourself? Do you do, you do it because you're going to get a, a better result? Do you do it because there's going to be less mess if the kids are involved? No, because you know how it's going to happen. It's going to take you longer, it's going to make more mess, and it's going to be worse than if you did it yourself. And yet, you want to spend time with the kids. You want the kids to learn. You want the kids to grow and mature. That's why you get your kids involved. And you know what? A lot of the time, God doesn't need us. But he says, I want to be working with you. I want to be working through you. This relationship that we're in with God... You know, that is established and grows and our maturity comes when we spend time with God, when we're out of our comfort zone, when we're in the barren place, just simply doing the things that we know God wants us to do. And as we do that, as we work with God, with his words in our mouth, well, then that's when the dramatic transformation comes. So we can start talking. Talk through prayer. Talk to God. Pray about this COVID situation. Pray about the difficulties that countries are experiencing. Pray about stuff that's got nothing to do with COVID, but it's still a situation that needs praying about. Declare over it. You know, God's word has so many promises in it. Prophesy the word of God into those situations and talk to people. God's word in your mouth, explaining to people the greatness of Jesus, what he's done for you and how he can transform lives. God's word in our mouths 
it has this incredible transforming effect as we see here. And then the third thing that happens. We've got a barren place. We've got God's word. What's the third thing? Well, there's a message in the context of this story. We heard that these bones represented the whole of Israel. And Israel at that time was a troubled place. It was a a place where they were desolate, they were weak, they were isolated, they were ineffective, they were powerless. And they were crying out to God and saying, "We, we can't go on, we can't cope in the situation that we're in. And when God uses Ezekiel in this vision of these bones coming to life, he's saying, as you speak what you've seen to the people of Israel, you will see that life is going to come back. There is going to be growth. You're going to become effective. You're going to be powerful. And in that word, it says that they stood up as a united army. When the life came in, when the bones came together, they became a united army. Well, what's an army? Well, it's that group of unified people who work together to achieve things. The very opposite of barren bones which are dead and lifeless and separated. And isn't that how God wants the church to be? A united people, a people brought together. And that's why we're doing this tonight. That's why various churches are involved. That's why you're looking at this from different congregations. Because if you've heard me speak for, for very long, you'll almost certainly hear me say there's only one church on this planet. There are different expressions, there are different congregations, but there's only one body of Christ on this planet. And we're all a part of it. We're all part of that united army. And that's why it's so great when we can do something like this, where we can join together to demonstrate that unity. Three things. That I'm talking about tonight. The barren place, God's word, and the united army. To respond to that point about the barren place. Well, if you're in the barren place, do not despair. Our country looks like it's in a barren place. Don't despair. The world looks like it's in a barren place. Don't despair. Because you can be a person who brings transformation because of God speaking through you, because of you acting and doing the right things with people that are around you. It's not how great we are, it's how great our God is. God's word was the second thing. God's word to bring life. You know, the simplest thing I'm asking you to do is to talk. Talk to God, pray. Declare scripture into this situation and talk to people about the greatness of our God. And the third thing, the united army. We should not be in competition as people. And yet sometimes you find yourself being jealous if you see that a congregation is bigger or has a better worship leader or all those things that sometimes we look around. But there's only one church. We're not in competition. So let's operate in unity. Let's pray for one another. Let's support and help one another. And to do that, let's pray now. Now, We know that things went wrong when we were doing this live, and we know that this is a recorded prayer. But here's the great thing. When you hear these words, it doesn't matter that it's a recorded prayer. Because God hears them now as I speak them in in front of this camera. But the point is, they become effective as well with your agreement, with your amen, with you saying, right now, I've heard those words, God. I add my faith into that. I add my desire into that. I am asking for it too. My amen says, I want that to happen too. So don't discount this because it's a recorded prayer. Because for you, this is happening live. You're listening to this, watching this right now. So let this become a prayer for you and for God to work through you. Father, for those in a barren place watching now, I pray you would bring your life to them. I pray, God, that where there is despair, you would bring a lifting of that, that you would bring your light into that dark place. And we look for you to make a difference in this world. And I declare that scripture from 2 Chronicles 7.14, which many people are praying at 7.14 
every day. That if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven. I will forgive their sin and I will heal their land. Oh God, we declare that to you. We ask you to be the one who heals our land. Come and heal our specific situations, our difficulties, whether they're COVID-related or something else that we're going through. Come and be the healer in that situation. For our city, as this is a city celebration, we pray for you to bring healing. We recognize the, there's problems with jobs. There's problems that, that we have with, with homelessness uh, in general. As some people are now starting to leave um, the, the lockdown accommodation that they've been given. God, we speak your life and transformation into our city. For the health service, for education, for the council, we bring a life-transforming word of prosperity to our city. And for our nation, heal our land. We ask it in Jesus' name. We are praying. We are interceding. We are speaking to what may appear to be dry bones. We speak the Spirit of God. We, we breathe the breath of God into what appears to be barren, and we speak life, and we look for change. We look to see those palpable differences for people's lives who are, are listening to this, who are thinking about their specific situations, people that, that they want to get well, people that they need to have jobs. Bring that difference in Jesus' name. And as we sing Waymaker, even though or even when I can't see it, you're working. Even when I can't feel it, you're working. You never stop. You never stop working. You never stop. You never stop working. That is our declaration tonight. And we worship you as you move amongst us.
you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I Stop, you never stop working Even when I don't see it, you're working Even when I don't feel it, you're working You never stop, you never stop 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 working Let's declare the truth Miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are the way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. So whatever we face today, whatever it is, it seems to be unbreakable, unchangeable, uncrossable. The Lord makes a way because he's a miracle worker. So let's just take those things in our minds that seem to be outside of his control and sing these words one last time. We declare the truth of you, Jesus. You are a way maker, a miracle worker. Promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are a way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. 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 Thank you so much to all those who have participated and contributed to our worship this evening. Uh, a particular thank you to Ian for bringing a great message, a great word of encouragement and challenge to the church here in Stoke-on-Trent. Uh, we pray a blessing over you as you go into the rest of your Sunday evening and the rest of your week, uh, and we'll see you very soon. God bless. <laughs>